What's up, everyone? My name is Brandon. I'm Gary. And this is another special edition of Brandon and Gary Game Talk. Ryan couldn't be here today, so Gary, thankfully, was able to fill in again. Thanks, man. I appreciate it. We got uh, a couple big stories today, but then just yeah. a couple tiny ones. The big ones are Avengers and Cyberpunk, so I was going to leave it up to you where you want to start. Hmm. Because I'll I think probably I talk more Avengers. Say, You'll probably talk more Cyberpunk. Yeah, I think I want to save Cyberpunk so I can, uh, what do you call it, savor it. <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> well, well, let's deep dive into some Avengers stuff. Uh, right. We'll just go start with this article I pulled, Marvel's Avengers Assembled Today, for a more in-depth preview. This is from Airy Notice at Kotaku. So I think it was Thursday was the Avengers War Table is what they're calling them. They're now going to be doing these every few weeks, I guess, to deep dive into the Square Enix's Crystal Dynamics Avengers game that they're working mm -hmm. on. So I don't know if I want to pull some specific details from this article or just play the video and talk about it over it. We don't have to talk about the video, but... What up? Kool-Aid. What's <laughs> up? All right. So we'll show some of this while we're talking, because I think uh, I don't need the audio on. Yeah. Did you watch this gameplay or watch anything I from the War did. Table? I watched like most of it. Okay. I had to read all the articles, but uh, yeah. Um, I really <laughs> love Paula Harris. I'm really glad she's here. She looks fun, and it sounds like she's fun from the previews I've read. Honestly, I'm probably not gonna play as her that much, but she seems cool. Yeah. <laughs> I. She's like one of those characters that they came out with post like the Avengers movie to get people into it. Yeah. And from what I hear, it works. Like Yeah, like I've heard they're really good. And even yeah. like her first issue or the first story arc is amazing, I guess. So, like if you have any questions about if she's legit, just read oh, the story. Oh, that guy. Sorry, I had a thing I wanted to say about that guy with the eye patch. Okay. Uh I think he's actually a guy from like a series of comics they did in the early 2000s. Where they were basically okay. like, these are normal people living in the Marvel universe. What's that like? And uh, he's like a reporter. Uh, like, there was this really good, very well um, illustrated graphic novel of just like the history of the Marvel universe, but uh, like okay. in him as a reporter. That sounds cool, like from his perspective and stuff. Yeah, I read it in middle school, and I loved the hell out of it. Nice. I, I cannot remember the name of it right now. I just wanted to point out that small thing because it made me very happy to see him. Yeah, that's really cool. I'll have to try and find that at some point. But so, yeah, the War Table started out with this mission, which is because, if you don't know, the Avengers game is a mashup of single-player story-based missions, and then there's also co-op missions, and then there's these War Table missions, which are up to four players. But they're going for essentially like a third person action game but mixed with destiny are the vibes that i get mm -hmm. which if it's fun i'm fucking all in for that shit yeah and it looks almost really fun i don't know <laughs> i don't know what vibes you're getting from it thor looks really cool they Wait. haven't really shown other heroes that much they've shown kamala a little yeah. bit a uh, little they shown kamala a little bit uh, when they go over the part about, like, the heroic powers and stuff, they give us some, like, flavor of some other people. Mm -hmm. um, Which, yeah, I don't have that pulled up. I just have the gameplay from the story mission they showed with Thor. Uh, it looks really good. It obviously throwing the hammer gives me uh, God of War vibes. Right, yeah. And I know is the always... combat director is the guy who directed the combat in God of War, which makes sense. Oh, then this game's going to be fucking excellent. Like, right. <laughs> we don't need to talk about it or it's going to be perfect. <laughs> so just from what I've seen, like, I want to play Thor the most. I hope Iron Man is fun because I would love I to hope... be Iron Man, obviously. I want to be a Hulk. I want to do a Smash. Um... <laughs> there you go. And what, honestly, what excites me the most is they do, they did go into the skill trees a lot. And it looks very, you can play Thor like super ranged if you want. You can be super up and close. You can be super Mjolnir focused, not Mjolnir focused. More Thor Ragnaroki, where he's just all fucking lightning around him and shit all the time. Yeah, yeah. fuck. I love, sorry, Thor Ragnarok, best Marvel movie. It's so great, yeah. Ragnarok's yeah. amazing. So I don't know, getting into the weeds of it all, I'm into that, and I'm into the gear. Because like the gear is very Destiny-esque as well. So like you're equipping... I don't know what they specifically showed 
but basically like different repulsors on your Iron Man armor. It doesn't change the look, but your stats are all tied to that, and you can get sweet perks that affect your skills. And so, yeah, That's they, right. you can do co-op finishers like this. So, like, if we're playing in a yeah. game together and we stagger an enemy enough, if we both go to it, we can do, like, a sweet team finisher to kill enemies faster, which is fucking that sick. Dope as hell. Yeah. I, um, I'm a little upset that it doesn't change the way they look because, you know, like, they've had so many looks in the comics over, like, the many decades they've been around. Yeah. So I would love to be like, oh, you're playing Chris Hemsworth Thor? Well, actually, I'm playing, like, 1980s Thor, where he had, like, the full beard. Right. Which, your gear doesn't change the way you look, but there are a ton of skins. So you can change your look that way. Okay, I didn't see that part, then. Yeah, there's a lot of different skins and everything in the game. Like, he's wearing a Donald Blake skin, which is an old alter ego of Thor, back when Thor yeah, transformed. Yeah, like, the beginning, yeah. Yeah. He's whoever finds this hammer and has the oh. Yeah, and they showed the 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 Hulk one where he's got the suit on and like the hat, like the gangster, the gangster Hulk. Mm-hmm. God, I used uh it's Joe something. I yeah. can't Yep. Yeah, I don't remember for sure. Because that skin's been in other games and stuff too. Yeah. But specifically the Thor gameplay looks really good, and they did show some skill trees for Hulk, and that looks cool. And I remember from the E3 demo, they said Thor was fun and Black Widow was really fun. The one that yeah, the one I've heard the least about is Black Iron Widow. Man, which makes me worried that he's not fun to play. I feel like it would be really hard. Like, from what we've seen of, like, the lightning powers Thor gets and how fun that looks. Mm -hmm. And then the little bit we've seen of, like, Black Widow and her little, like, friggin' uh, shocky shit. It yeah. would be really hard to fuck up Iron Man if you can nail those. Right, yeah. Yeah, and I think Black Widow sounds like she plays almost like a third-person shooter, because she's got the guns. So, like, you're oh, shooting, yeah. but then also meleeing, and yeah, you have your your phasers and everything like that. Tasers, phasers. Yeah. But yeah, the skill system seems really cool. I'm excited for a beta to happen, which apparently they'll announce at a future war table. For me, it's gonna be... This game comes out September 4th. Mm -hmm. It's going to be, if I like the beta, I'm probably going to get this. If I don't like the beta, I'm probably going to wait and get the Destiny 2 expansion that comes out in September. Because <laughs> I've been playing a lot of Destiny again, which we can get into. I've never played Destiny. Destiny's really fun. I keep hearing good things about it. I don't, I'm not really super into grind. Like I like to feel when I'm doing playing a game mm -hmm. that I like making progress and when i grind i just don't get enough progress in enough time for it, it to be worth it for me it depends because like i love grinding and stuff in diablo and everything and in yeah. destiny it's really fun too because destiny is just extremely fun to play like the moment to moment shooting and gameplay is a blast which is mm -hmm. as long as this game is a blast to play i will fucking grind the shit out of it and they're adding new heroes new missions and all that for free the it's all cosmetic based microtransactions which you can get skins by doing missions and finding them and that kind of thing there are going to be some skins that are exclusive to like microtransactions but i don't give a shit i'll buy a skin if they're giving me free heroes and missions hell yeah i just sorry i saw thor's face in a close-up for a second and it reminded me you that everyone excited. looks like the porn parody actors oh yeah like, <laughs> they do yeah like they look just close enough right so yeah that was the, the gameplay i suppose i could try and bring up well i don't know how much more we have to talk about avengers did yeah. i pull anything else let me i'm just gonna scroll through this article but i'm excited for it i want it to be good so bad and like crystal dynamics makes good shit they've never made a game like this they've made third person action games like tomb raider and everything but what oh they introduced modok as one of the bigger villains oh yeah i don't know if he's the villain but he's a big villain, obviously. Because, yeah, they showed some CG trailers as well. Let me see what we got. So, and there was stuff removed from that. So, like, if you're playing it yourself, there will be a HUD. The enemies do have health bars and things like that. <clears throat> and, it could, well, you haven't played Destiny. But it's similar to Destiny, and you, your character has, like, three bigger abilities. I think they're called heroics in Avengers. So you have mm -hmm. one that's quicker, and it recharges faster... And then another one that I don't know if it was passive or something. I forget what they called it. But There's anyway. a passive and assault and a heroic. Yeah, and the heroic is like your ultimate. 
So yeah. in that video, Thor can use the Bifrost to have just a big charge down on the ground, which is what he did to bypass the shield on that last boss. Yeah. But then you can tweak those in your skills, I believe. And your loot can also, your gear can also change them and tweak them. Like they showed Iron Man using the signature laser spin from like Iron Man 2 when he kills the fucking drone army at the end. Yeah. They show him doing that, but then you can also change it so there's an element system as well and there's one where it changes his element to gamma so like his lasers and shit are green and everything so i assume it's like a rock paper scissors system where like gamma beats something i don't remember what the other ones were i think pim pim might have been one of the elements yeah pim particles <laughs> uh, mm -hmm. i don't know beta ray bill <laughs> yeah but i love like gear and loot systems and skill trees so like if this game is fun to play it looks like a more intricate Ultimate Alliance, which so it's like simple, yeah. simpler, but not as simple as that. And you can tweak I, it a lot, which makes me hope that there's good depth to it. If they do it like as a live service game, like they do Destiny, which is what it sounds uh, like they're doing. Yeah, I would like to see them like bring in other Marvel heroes. I think mm -hmm. like get, like a full like Ultimate Alliance level roster would be awesome. Because yeah. I would, love, I would fuck up being Spider-Man, swinging around there. Right, and they, I think at their next war table, they're going to introduce the first add-on hero, like the first. Well, they're all going to be free, so it's going to be the first post-launch hero. But then, oh yeah, so this is the Hulk skin I was talking about in the business suit. Yeah. Oh God, it, that's going to kill me. Don't know if I'm that's gonna what it is. So bad. Uh, I'm not sure. I. Just like a month ago, I started reading um, the a really big uh, Hulk storyline that's going on right now. It's like Ultimate Hulk or something. I can't remember the name right now, and it's killing me. Okay. But very good, and just seeing Hulk in action makes me want to go back and reread it. It just makes me want to play. Did you ever play Hulk Ultimate Destruction? That like kind of open world Hulk game that came out in PS2, GameCube, Xbox generation. No, unfortunately. Really fun, actually. I think I rebought it on GameCube or something because I had gotten rid of it and I was mad at myself. But I was a dumb kid who needed money for other games. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, here. So the gear's all color coded too. So it's very Destiny MMO esque. So you got like green, blue, purple, yellow as far as loot tiers go. And then so I don't think I mentioned this. So the, yeah, co-op exists. You can tackle some missions with a partner. You can team up with up to three other players during other missions called War Zones. And if you don't have friends to play with, the, your teammates are replaced with AI, which is sweet. So you can still play all this if you don't have if you don't have friends to play with or if you just don't want to play with friends. Like if you want to just play by yourself and not have to deal with other people, which I get sometimes. Yeah, totally. The coolest part is that there's like big battlefields and you can do those combo finishers so it'll be like they also showed a buff so thor was was it thor who was floating in the air with like his electric aura and iron man flies through it and he gets buffed by thor yeah. to like deal more damage or something like that which is sick so it's like i could fly by somebody as iron man or fly by as thor and someone else buffs me or i fly past you and you're irradiating gamma or some shit like that <laughs> But yeah. also, if we're, like, on different sides of the battlefield fighting, like, these big robots, and they're close to getting stunned, I can be like, hey, Gary, come over here, we'll finish this guy off quick, Can you just leap across the battlefield as Hulk, and we just fucking wreck this guy, and then you go back to yours, and I fly over, like, I want that, that sounds awesome. Yeah. I am, like, I had no, like, expectations for this before this. Mm -hmm. Like, I saw, like, the E3, I think it was, where they announced yeah, it, and they, they showed the showed popularity it. actors. Um... <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, and I was just like oh okay this is another game but like looking at this makes me actually really excited for it yeah and with the more I think about it the more I want it because at E3 I was like oh I don't know it looks cool and I hope it's good but I don't know if it's going to be and initially when I saw this I was like it still looks like it could be good but it could just be okay I think it's at least going to be okay and I think it's going to at least be enough for me to get it and want to play it a bunch like, I don't yeah. think it's going to be, like, a 10, but it's not going for that, because it's going for, like, a live service game. I do think the story will be really good, like, the main single-player story, because they got good talent for it, at least as far as, like, voice acting goes. And Crystal yeah. Dynamics knows how to make good campaigns. Like, Nolan North is Iron Man. Troy Baker is Bruce Banner. Um, I think Laura Bailey is Black Widow. I don't know the guy's name who plays Thor, but he's very good in the stuff they've shown for Thor. So, like, I'm into it. 
Yeah. So yeah. Very just, theatrical Thor going on. Right. Yeah. He feels the most MCU out of all of them. <laughs> also, we don't know shit about Captain America. He's gonna be in the game. But so in the first E three demo, Captain America dies because of this uh setup. Basically, he's on a helicarrier that goes down and explodes while all the other Avengers are on the San Francisco Bridge. And then the game actually starts. Well, the game starts with that, but then you play as Kamala, and she sees this from the distance, and then she basically notices that it was a setup, kind of. And she's, for years, I don't know how long the Avengers are disbanded, but they disband because of that. And she figures out some info, and then is basically tasking herself with bringing the Avengers back together, which is kind of where that mission we just saw comes in i believe yeah but it seems fun i'm very into the gear and the skill tree system i'm sure there are people out there who are just like i just want a single player avengers game but if i can play this game forever also you get free upgrades to ps5 or xbox series x it's coming out in september which cyberpunk is not anymore so we're, i'm gonna be in a drought at that point so this is asking me to buy it yeah. <laughs> it's a pain I would also like to see it. I, it would also be cool to see, like I play it on PS4 in September and then I get a PS5 later in the year to just be able to see the differences, you know? Like, oh man, this loading is so much faster. It's just so much smoother, you know? That would be a cool comparison. So we'll see. I'm stoked for it. I want to know a beta date because I'm at least going to pre-order it on Amazon because they don't charge you and I'll get a beta code. <laughs> yeah. I'm... Yeah, let me know how that beta is, I guess, and that'll make sure whether or not I put the money down. Yeah, and I'm hoping it's something where maybe if I get into the beta, because I pre-order it, I can, like, get a couple friends into the beta, because games like this do that sometimes. So I can be like, Gary, let's kill shit. Hell yeah, I the Hulk time all the time, let's do it. Right? (laughs) Yeah, I also think it's cool that you want to play Hulk, because I'm... Right now, I'm like all in on Thor because he's they've shown him the most. I want to play Iron Man, obviously. Yeah. But if you're I, playing co-op missions, you don't you can't play as the same hero. I don't think. So like, if you're Hulk, I can't be Hulk, or if I'm Thor, you can't be Thor. So I think initially that might be a little rough because there's only going to be five heroes at launch. Mm-hmm. I think there's only going to be five at launch. So Captain America, Iron Man, Thor, Hulk, Black Widow, Kamala. Did I say Kamala? Is it six? Did I count her twice? I don't think you did. So is there six? So that's pretty good. That's, yeah, yeah. And I assume if they're already announcing one before the game comes out, that it'll be pretty soon after launch, that that one will come out. Well, so now, moving on from Avengers, the day after, I believe, Avengers thing was, Cyberpunk had a what did they call it night city wire yeah so, i think that's what they yeah brand new reveal this is matt kim ign uh was a digital live stream ad- uh, event diving deep into cg projects right upcoming rpg new trailer new gameplay dive and a look at the brain dance feature november 19th is the new release date or play tacoma inside your rpg <laughs> yeah is that how tacoma is i never played tacoma so it's a lot like that. It's okay. like a ton like that. Like I saw that. And I'm like, oh, that's that's Tacoma. Okay. <laughs> and Tacoma's a good game, so I'm not complaining. Yeah, Tacoma's made by the the people who made that one really good point and click adventure game. You played it on my PS4 when you were staying with us for a couple days. Oh, Gone Home. Yeah, it's those people. Yeah, uh, really like Gone Home. Really liked. Tacoma, if you're into like, uh, they call them, I guess, uh, walking simulators, but yeah. if you're into that kind of a thing, they make good shit. Yeah, I played, um, I still haven't played either of them. <laughs> I've heard Gone Home's amazing, and I heard Tacoma's good too, and I think that's on Game Pass, so it's like I could play both of them if I wanted to. Gone Home feels kind of like the proto version of a lot of those, like, walking sims. Like, it's good, but, like, you can kind of see where, like, everyone else kind of went off from what they built. Yeah, yeah, because they kind of updated it for a more modern 
Because, like, there were walking sims before, but this felt... This felt like it changed it for the better, I guess. It kind of made the mold, I guess. Yeah. Like, yeah. But yeah, back to Cyberpunk. Did you want to leave this combo? Did you watch this? Did you get the... Uh, I watched all the videos and read all the articles that you sent. Okay. And, uh, yeah. So uh, got all of this. We start. Um, I don't think I saw anything that made me super like you or anything like that. Okay. Like, I think the thing some people get hung up on is like customizable genitals, which is like, I don't give a shit. <laughs> like, yeah, you can make whatever, whoever. Which is cool. Gender slash mixed gender person you want to. In a given video game, I can't wait. Like, yeah. my hope is to be able to play a cybernetic uh, Dr. Frankenfurter from Rocky oh, Horror. Yeah. And just cut dudes up with my scissor hands. That'll be dope. I feel like <laughs> you can do that in this game. Yeah. And if I can, I, I'll live stream it. <laughs> like, yeah. Well, that's what this game seems like. It's very role-playing heavy where you can do whatever you want they introduced that you pick from three different backgrounds which determines kind of where you start in the game but once you get through that it doesn't really have much effect on the game afterwards like you're still picking your story as you go it's not it's not set in stone because you pick this background to start that this affects the end or shit like that yeah everything i want them to show the goddamn gunplay already yeah, and they've showed it a little bit. Like, it's first person. I read some preview stuff because people got to preview the game for four hours. Yeah. They said the gunplay does feel good, which is good because I was a little worried about that because they've only made third person action RPGs. Yeah. But That's the only thing I'm nervous about to any extent. Uh, the story, like, I've played The Witcher 3 a little bit. Mm -hmm. And if they just simply put like 10%. Of what they put into The Witcher 3 into this, it'll be great. <laughs> yeah. The one thing I did hear, like, because it's first person, like, yeah. the character creator is, like, super robust. And the, and one of the people I was reading was like, I didn't, just don't really see your character a lot. Which is most games, I guess, like this. But he's like, every yeah. once in a while, there was a mirror. Uh, but that was it. <laughs> it's like, yeah. That, yeah. Like, in this world, it would be cool to see more of yourself. Yeah. I mean, like, Skyrim has a character creator in its first person, too. You mm -hmm. just... Yeah. Yeah, in Skyrim, it's one of those things where every once in a while, I'll just toggle third person to see what I look like. Yeah. If they just <laughs> add that option, I'm good. Like, mm -hmm. I want to... That's just first person RPGs. You don't get to see the character you spent two hours right. making. So the biggest focus of this thing, which honestly is, like, the least excited thing I am, excited about for this game is the brain dance stuff like it's it seems cool but it also seems like it slows down the pace more than i want it to be so if you didn't watch or read about it, brain dance is basically a recording of somebody else's experience so that that you replay like you're kind of plugged in and you can rewind fast forward it's kind of like a detect you use it to detect like as a detective mode to try and learn something about the situation or learn something about someone in this person's past memory like they're just the example they used was a thug who went to go shoot up a like quick stop kind of store and he ends up getting shot at the end and you're trying to figure out who it was and there's different devices like you can hone in on audio you can change the the filters on the video feed there's a lot of detective work involved to me it seemed a little tedious and i hope that it's not and i and if it is tedious i hope that it's not a gigantic part of the game and the gameplay what, how did you feel about it? Obviously, I won't know until I play it. Um, I Like I said, it reminded me of Tacoma, and I really love Tacoma. Okay. Um, I kind of got a detective-y feel from it, which makes me feel like excited, because I feel like there aren't enough detective games. Right. Um, yeah, and it's always like a side aspect. So like in the Batman games, you do some detecting, but it's not a huge deal. It's not like a huge part of it. And same with... Um, what was that Platinum game that was exclusive to Switch where he plays the cops? Astral Chain. There's detective stuff in there, which is pretty cool because you're a cop, so you're trying to figure out crime scene shit. But I just don't want to... I don't want to be stuck in a detective mode thing for like a half an hour because I can't find the right frequency for this one audio log that I need to advance the mission because I feel like that might frustrate me. 
but I don't think it's going to be that. I just worry that it might be like that. <laughs> but that won't yeah. kill the game for me, even if it is that, because everything else in this game I'm super stoked for, like the augmentations you do, the change your skills, like you can get some form of scissor hands, I'm sure, because they've shown some shit like that, and you can like change your eye, there's different skill trees, you can be stealthy, more action-y, and then the choices as far as character interaction goes. And there's no, there's not a morality system as far as like good and bad. Like there's like a street cred system, and everything you do just makes that go up. So there's not like a, a what was the system in Mass Effect called? Um, uh, renegade Paragon. Yeah, there's not like a hard Paragon Renegade, like good bad, style choice system, which I like. The game seemed to be getting away from that, because that is a little on the nose as far as choices yeah. go. Yeah. I really enjoy uh, games that kind of go more based on reputation, mm -hmm. like yeah. especially like New Vegas did. Which I still um, haven't played more than like ten hours in. Um, I mean, it's a bad time to be playing that. I we might get into that. We might not. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, but I really liked the reputation system with that. So like. Doing things for some people will piss other people off, like, mm -hmm. in actuality. And I kind of like that. Yeah, I think I remember and watching Kool-Aid play, like, you don't know if it's a so-called good choice or a bad choice. Because it's good for your reputation with this faction, but this is going to piss this other one off. But you can yeah. make those tough choices. Which Fallout 4 kind of had that, but I don't think it was as done as well. Neither do I. I just, in general, didn't think Fallout 4 was done as well. But Yeah, yeah. I like Fallout 4. A lot of people shit it on it. Bad. I had a lot of fun with it, but it's not... It was fun. It was just not as good as New Vegas. Yeah, and it didn't evolve Fallout in the way that Fallout 3 did, which is, I think, kind of what I wanted. Yeah. I mean, the shooting in it was a ton better, just the RPG-ness the was, was taken out quite a bit. I'm trying to find what the three choices are for Cyberpunk 2077. Like, what do you choose? Oh, it's Nomad, Corp, and Street. That's right, yeah. Nomad, Corp, and Street. So Corp is like you come from a corporation background, and the Nomads are the ones who are kind of in the Outlands. They did show an Outlands setting, which is like outside mm -hmm. of Night City. Is that what the city's yeah. called? Okay. Nice. And, then, and then Street, which is like a, you come up from the streets basically that one sounds most like what i'm probably gonna choose what are you gonna choose do you know oh god i don't know i mean it depends on what kind of character i'm making mm -hmm. um if i want to make like a gum shoes i'd start them in like a corp background okay uh if i wanted to do like um like a roust about kind of like pickpocket i'd start them from the street okay. if i wanted to do just like a big tough dude i would make them like that <laughs> See, like with Nomad, I one of the, the same guys preview that I read, he picked Corp, and he said he never saw the outskirts in like the four hours that he played. So I think if you pick Nomad, you start in the outskirts of the city. Yeah. And I just want to get right into the city, so I think that's partially why I want to choose Street or Corp, depending on what like the justification and the description of it is, because we don't know that, I don't think. Yeah. Besides just kind of guessing. But yeah, I'm thinking street because that's kind of how I want to start and work my way up that way. I'm trying to think of like what I would do if I was in the situation, and that seems most like me, I guess. I guess the one that would be most like me is I don't like I'm from small towns. I can't say I'm from the street, but <laughs> I guess corp. <laughs> yeah, like I'm not good with machines so i wouldn't be like nomad yeah i definitely wouldn't be nomad nomad seems to uh btb for me <laughs> big truck boy yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> so i don't know and corp seems to like i work at walmart i'm a manager there <laughs> but not a high manager <laughs> i mean you don't know what corp means it could mean you're just like a middle manager which would be kind of that's true yeah <laughs> But I want to stick it to the man. Does Corp want to stick it to the man? Who knows? I mean, I guess that's the choices your character is going to make. I can choose Corp and then choose to stick it to the man. Ooh, I like that. Maybe maybe there's something there. Yeah, like you were screwed over and now you're just going to use your position to steal office supplies. 
Right. Yeah, exactly. They don't need that many staplers. Now I, I know this. we, me and Ryan talked about this last week, but I'm gonna, and I think you were talking about it in the chat as well. Well, you're not gonna mm-hmm. get a PS5 right away, so the choice is probably easier. Because this is coming out November 19th. I assume next gen consoles will be out or almost out at that point. I am torn around with games because this is going to be out. Spider Man's going to be out. Uh, Assassin's Creed Valhalla is most likely going to be out. I don't see it not coming out before Thanksgiving. Yeah. Those are all big games. Spider Man's probably going to be the smallest because it's going to be probably half the size, they said, of Spider Man PS4. The city, I think, will be just as big, but as far as story missions goes, maybe 20 hours versus 40 hours, which is still bigger. Are you excited about any of those other games? You're not going to get a PS5, right? Right away? Not right away. I want to see, like, the way things are in a couple of months after it comes out. Yeah. So that's off your list. Are you into Assassin's Creed? I know you're into Cyberpunk more than Assassin's Creed. Yeah, way more. Um, I've played some of the Assassin's Creeds. They're fine. Okay. Like, Which ones have you played? Uh, I've played two in Black Flag, so I haven't played any of the new, more modern ones. I mean, two in so, Black Flag are two of the best. So. Yeah. They're really fun, and I enjoyed them. Yeah, those are also two of the best protagonists. I would say, like, two Black Flag and Odyssey are, like, if I had to make a top three, it would be some amalgamation of those. I don't know what order. But like yeah. Ezio's amazing, and to Edward Kenway, I think you play in Black Flag, right? Yeah. And then and, uh, I play as Cassandra in Odyssey because she's a fucking badass. You can choose to play as Alexios, but he's not as cool. Cassandra's way cooler. Yeah. But they're more RPGs now. If you didn't know that. Yeah, I didn't uh, know that. I just haven't picked any of them up. Yeah. If you ever want, I, I think I have Origins, or no, Ryan has it right now but I think he finished it. So if you ever want to try one, Origins isn't as good as Odyssey, but it is that RPG system, and it's still really cool. Yeah, Yeah, I might pick it up eventually. So I don't know where I'm going to be at. I guess I'm probably going to look at... I don't know. I don't know which one I'm going to choose. It'll be... I'll I'll probably get Spider-Man right away and play that. But then it's like, which one do I get first? Because I want to play both Cyberpunk and Valhalla. (laughs) Yeah, for me, it's no contest. Yeah. Like, I love Norse mythology and all, but... Mm-hmm. Gotta do a stab with my spider arm. Gotta do it. Cyberpunk, I think, will be more unique than Valhalla's yeah. gonna be. Not that Valhalla's not gonna be unique, but I think I know what I'm getting from it. Like, it's uh-huh. gonna be similar to Odyssey as far as gameplay goes, with a different setting and new story beats, obviously. But Cyberpunk isn't, like, nothing I've ever played before. Yeah, it. I'm so fucking excited for it. <laughs> like, how bummed were you by the delay? I mean, I was kind of bummed. I was really looking forward to it because, like, I'll be honest. Like, I got my uh, mm-hmm. check for uh, the stimulus, and I just have an amount of it. I was not going to spend until some. Oh, hey. Yeah. In zero oh three. I get that, MB. I finish a lot less. Uh, yeah. a lot less single player games than I used to I still will finish ones that hook me like I'm playing uh, Last of Us right now but like I didn't finish Control and I don't know if I'll get back to that there's other shit yeah. I haven't finished either like I never finished Odyssey I never finished Origins but MMOs sometimes I'm playing Destiny more again which is kind of MMO-y but not like your traditional I'm just looking at my game shelf to see what games I haven't finished on it uh, oh, I'm not going to do that to myself. Um, <laughs> I never finished Rage 2. Rage 2 was really fun. Never finished it. I did finish the first Bayonetta I, like a month ago. So that was good. Skyrim, yeah. yeah. Skyrim, uh, yeah, is always one. That's on my shelf, too. I was going to say that, but I've actually finished it. <laughs> it took a goddamn global quarantine to make me finally finish Skyrim. <laughs> so, <laughs> I never finished Dragon Age. Dragon Quest 11. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I get that way. I don't. I very much check stuff off my list then. If I don't, it's like, I'm never going to go back to Odyssey. I'm never going to go back to Origins. But it's like I played those games and I can speak on them. I can't speak on the stories, but. Yeah. 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 I don't have a ton of. I do have some other news. 
Yeah, Destiny yeah. 2 is fun. The, the, thankfully, there's a ton of PvE stuff you can do now, which early on in like vanilla Destiny and Destiny 2, the the PvP was a bigger part of it. it. Granted, it's still a big part of it, but you don't have to do it, which is nice. Yeah. Because I haven't done it in years. I do... There is a mode called Gambit, which is really fun, where it's you and three other people. You're fighting mostly just enemies and not other players, and every once in a while, another player from the other team can, like, come through a portal and try and fuck your shit up, but they're only there for 30 seconds and you can kill them. Like, you can just team up on them and kill them. But they're basically there to distract you to get more points for their side. Yeah, Gambit's super fun. I still don't even play that that much, though. <laughs> yeah, I just have some smaller stories now. Uh, Last of Us Part 2, fastest-selling PS4 exclusive. Sold, well... In a small period, it's not, yeah, so fast as selling. Hasn't sold the most yet, but officially sold through over 4 million copies as of June 21st. Which is kind of surprising compared to something like Spider-Man, which was the previous record holder, which is a rated T game, and uh, Spider-Man's an extremely recognizable symbol. Yeah. yeah, Strikes and Destiny are super fun indie. So, yeah, yeah I'm was kind of surprised by that too, but there has been so much hype behind this since it was announced mm -hmm. that it's not like super surprising. Yeah, and The Last of Us 1 did sell a ton of copies. Yeah. The best, uh, I think the best selling PS4 exclusive is Uncharted 4 right now. Let me look. Which I would have guessed it was Spider Man. Let's see, list of best-selling PS4 video games. Yeah, we'll go through that. Well, GTA 5, of course. Um, yeah. <laughs> Uncharted 4 is number 2. Well, fucking 5, too, apparently. <laughs> yeah, GTA 5 is at 20 million. Uncharted 4 is at 16 million. Marvel's Spider-Man, 13.2 million. Witcher 3, 10.8 million. God of War, 10 million. Last of Us Remastered, 10 million. Which is crazy, because that's a PS3 game. I wonder how much it's sold on PS3. Uh, Horizon Zero Dawn, 10 million. Grand Turismo Sport, 8 million. Monster Hunter World, 4.6. Last of Us Part 2 is at number 10 now with 4 million. Final Fantasy 7 Remake is 11, 3.5 million. Which is crazy. Yeah. I cannot wait to play that game, but I need to, <laughs> you know? Which game? Like, Final Fantasy? No, uh, Last, Last of Us Part 2. Yeah, like, you play the first one? I played the first one. I really yeah. like it. But, like, I feel the same way about the second one as I do about, like, the newer seasons of BoJack Horseman. Oh, like, where it's going to be heavy it, and you know it? Like, yeah, I binged, like, the first couple of seasons. Mm -hmm. And then I, uh, they came out with a new one and I started watching. And, like, I'm not in a space I can watch this. And I just never yeah. came back to it. <laughs> I'm kind of the same way with The Last of Us Part Two right now. Just, like, I really want to play this game. It looks really fun. It's, not you know, right now. The first one was a game where I needed to take breaks. And for like the first, I'm probably, I don't even know if I'm halfway through it because it's a lot longer, I guess, than the first one. I think I'm like 11 hours in or something. And people have beaten it between 20 and like 35 hours. So who the fuck knows? Yeah. <laughs> but it's really fun, the gameplay and the stealth and stuff. But it's to the point where I think I just want to get to the story beats and the encounters are too long sometimes. Where I'm just like, this is fun, but I don't need to do a 40-minute encounter of stealth to just yeah. get to the next beat. I would prefer that the, those things to be smaller. So part of me might go into some settings and just make it easier for me to get through it and plow it. But we'll see. Yeah. We'll see how it goes. Because I've also been playing a lot of Destiny. So it's like I want to play that a lot because the gameplay loop is more fun. But The Last of Us is still really fun, and I love these characters, and I want to know what's going on. Yeah. The Last of Us, Joel. yeah, they could see that making a good Let's Play because it's so tense, especially if it's like the first time you're playing it. Yeah. So there you go, Gary. You got to stream yourself playing The Last of Us Part Two. Yeah, fucking. Here's my box of tissues. Jesus. <laughs> I'm just someone's gonna fucking die, and I'm gonna lose it again. <laughs> All right, so we're gonna pivot to some Pokemon news that was that I'm not excited about. Oh, yeah. So there was Pokemon oh. news last week. Everyone was excited. Uh, I don't. What was the Pokemon? They announced Pokemon Snap, which is sweet. And then what the I did, they did not have like I. My cousin had a Nintendo sixty four. 
Okay. And I never did. So I and he didn't have Pokemon Snap. So I completely uh, missed the train on that. Yeah, Pokemon Snap was, I think I said this last week, it's one of those games that I thought was stupid until I played it. Like Animal Crossing, like Super Mario Sunshine, like Wind Waker. I love all of those games a lot. And it wasn't until I played them that I was like, oh, this is legit. Like Pokemon Snap is an on-rails photography game, for lack of a better term. But the way you can interact with the Pokemon and change the environments and make Pokemon evolve and different Pokemon appear just by like throwing apples and rocks is actually really cool. And, yeah, they're making a new one, which is sick. But at, during that announcement, they teased another Pokemon announcement next week, which was this previous week. And there was some hints, there was some Johto shit in the background, so people were thinking maybe a Let's Go version of Pokemon Gold and Silver, which I would have been down with, because that's my favorite generation. I would have been more down with just a full-on remake that wasn't Pokemon Let's Go-like. But instead, we got Pokemon Unite. A co-op strategy game announced. This is from Joe Scrubbles at IGN. I don't really need to dive into this. It's basically a MOBA, but with Pokemon. But it's, it's also Legends it's also Pokemon. designed for mobile phones as well as the Switch. So it looks pretty basic. Yeah. Um, my biggest problem is that it's made by Tencent. Um, oh, it is made by Tencent. I it's that. made by Tencent. Oh yeah. Yeah. What do you mean? They made Call of Duty Mobile. They know what they're yeah, doing. I, I, I understand that they know what they're doing. I just don't <laughs> like them at the company. No, I don't either. I'm throwing shit at them. Yeah. So, I don't know. Nobody wanted this. It's probably going to make a lot of money, especially because it's on mobile. None of mine. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. Uh, Pokemon Unite Reveal becomes the, mo the Pokemon Company's most disliked video on YouTube. <laughs> The only way they could have had a worse video is if they announced a game all about Trubbish. Like, that's the <laughs> only thing I think. Well, actually not Trubbish, because Trubbish is kind of cute. Garbador. Garbador. Yeah, yeah, Garbador. But then it would have been spun to, like, a, a make the Earth a better place kind of app, and then you'd feel shitty for disliking it and hating it. Yeah. I don't know. I don't care about this. I just... I like MOBAs. You know, I've played MOBAs in the past. I've not, gotten, sense, but... not gotten super deep into them. Like, I played some League of Legends and I played some Smite. They've been fun, but I don't know. Anyways, yeah. moving on. No, neither of us care about that. Yeah, uh, I just... Animal Crossing getting summer updates, which is cool. Hell yeah. It's from Adam Banker's IGN. Yeah, summer update wave one will come out July 3rd. It'll add ocean swimming, new characters, new items to find and donate, new DIY recipes, and more. So it sounds cool. I honestly have fallen off Animal Crossing pretty hard. Yeah. So this is exciting, and I'm sure I'll get back into Animal Crossing at some point, because that's how that game always rolls for me. And it's called Summer Update 1, so I'm assuming they're going to do more summer stuff, because why else would they call it that? Or maybe they'll do another summer and update next year. <laughs> yeah. Summer Update year two <laughs> yeah. the ocean still I'm gets... looking forward to the philosophy otter oh yeah I'm trying to think was he in something else Was it yeah he was in other ones okay that's what I thought but I wasn't positive because I could have yeah. just all cute animals fit in with animal crossing so I could have just been making that up in my head I, they said in the article okay Let's see. Yeah, I just have a couple of random tiny ones. There was an interview with uh, Sean Layden, ex-PlayStation boss. This is from IGN as well, Matt Perslow. So he had an interview, I don't know where it was, gamesindustry.biz. He discussed that he doesn't think the current model of AAA games is viable, basically. Which I, I mean, feel like... I can see that argument. Yeah. I feel like this conversation happens every couple of years. Yeah. Like, I remember Extra Credits back in the day did, like, a video on it years and years ago. Yeah, because this, this specific quote, uh, the problem with the model is it's just not sustainable, said Layden. He explained that current generation dev costs range between 80 and $150 million, excluding marketing costs for AAA games, with the work taking up to five years to complete. Furthermore, AAA budgets have historically doubled each generation, meaning that PS5 dev budgets could hit $300 million. Now, the biggest thing you hear from that, like, you see a lot of AAA games now having microtransactions in them to kind of yeah. offset that cost, which a lot of people, 
including me, I would just pay more money. I would pay 80 bucks for the Avengers if there were less or no microtransactions. Granted, they can make more money because I'll probably spend more than the $20 game increase on skins at some point. But that's also funding more game. Like, that's also funding free DLC for everybody. That kind of a thing. So I like that model. Because even if I don't pay, like, I don't spend any extra money in Destiny for skins or emotes. But they add content. But I do also have to buy expansion packs. So that's a weird system. I like Avengers setup better. And I hope that that works. Yeah. But then you see first party games, specifically Sony. Microsoft's been a little better. They did have microtransactions in, like, Forza 7. Which pissed people off. But Sony's first party mm-hmm. games don't have any of that. Like, God of War didn't have Kratos skins to go buy. Spider-Man didn't have suits to go buy. You just earned them. And uh, Horizon didn't have microtransactions of anything. Some of them added some story DLC that you could go buy. But there wasn't this extra cost in it. And I think those are designed that way because those are system sellers. Like yeah. That gets people to buy a PS4 and then to buy more than just those games, which Sony makes money off of everything bought. So they don't want to have the negative connotation of a microtransaction even though like i've said earlier i don't i i like some microtransactions and if it funds things in like overwatch that funds maps and characters and all that stuff that i don't have to buy and keeps these ecosystems connected doesn't split the player base with different multiplayer stuff i'm into that so yeah i don't know i i hear stuff about like how it's predatory for certain people Mm-hmm. who have like, uh, gambling addictions and the like. And I don't know, I feel like I kind of wish there was a way to opt out of it. Like, just say, hey, this is a danger for me. Please don't show this to me. Yeah, that's that's not a bad idea, honestly. So those menus just, like, don't appear or are grayed out, I guess. Something like I that. I would, like, even graying it out, I feel, would be a danger. Like, just straight up take it out. That's true. Yeah. So I don't know. I, I can see this being viable still because they sell a lot of copies and Sony is using it to sell systems. Granted, I do think, I don't know if game prices will go up. I'm surprised they haven't, honestly, in a while. Yeah. At least to 70. I'm surprised that hasn't happened. But I still don't see Sony adding microtransactions into their games because, like, Sony's first party games are what sells Playstations. And these games sell units, obviously, like we just saw with Last of Us. Mm Mm-hmm. So I don't know. I can see it eventually. They'll just have to increase the prices of the game. But yeah, it's just interesting to hear. We still don't know why he left PlayStation. Yeah. It was just announced in a tweet, and that was it. There was never a press release, never anything on the PlayStation blog. It was really weird. Yeah. This I yeah. honestly didn't even read this next article. Oh, did you have some more to say? Sorry. Uh, no. Go ahead. This is just games optimized for Xbox Series X. Will include ray tracing, higher frame rates, faster loading. This is Joe Scrubbles at IGN again. Faster, smoother, more ray tracing y is the sub headline. I didn't yeah. even read this article, so it just seemed I like did. it could have been interesting. Um, it's going to be better, faster, stronger. Like okay. you've heard, you know? Yeah, that's kind of what like, I expected. It seemed like an unnecessary regurgitation of information but Microsoft's been doing that with a lot of their stuff because people still seem confused. Well, maybe they should not name it something fucking stupid. Yeah, that's true. Like the Xbox One Series X, they should call it like the Xbox 3 or some shit like that. Like make it easy to distinguish from the last thing. Right. We, it's a real Wii U problem yeah, that they yeah. have not fallen into. Especially if this comes out and there is apparently a second rumored one that's cheaper. Like there's going to be an Xbox Series X on the shelf, maybe an Xbox Series S on the shelf, an Xbox One X on the shelf, and an Xbox One S on the shelf. That's going to confuse the fuck out of people. And the new Halo will play on all of them, so even if a parent is there getting something they don't know shit about video games, like, oh, my son wants a new Xbox, the one that can play Halo, and then they're like, oh, it can play on this one that's only 150 Why wouldn't I get that? Yeah. So I don't know. It's... I just, like, they are in the same industry mm-hmm. that the Wii U came out of. Right. Like, we've seen how this goes. Just name it something fucking different. Right. It's not hard. I still like the rumored name for the... 
the Xbox One, which was Xbox Infinite. I like that name a lot. And they yeah. just have an Is infinity symbol. Xbox Infinite? Yeah. People would know that it's fucking different. Right, and yeah. And buy that. They like, a- we're gamer dudes. Like, we pay attention to this. Yeah, we're in the zeitgeist hard. Yeah. People who aren't are just going to be confused about this. I remember I was like a kid. I was still in high school when Wii U came out and like I had grandparents and things talking to me like, hey, I really liked my Wii. Do I need to get this new thing? And I was only starting into the zeitgeist and I was confused. Mm. Like it was. Yeah. Yeah, This just just again. And it's like just learn from other people's mistakes. It's right Mm. there. All the articles are still up, (laughs) you know? The history repeats itself, though, man. <laughs> yeah. People are fucking stupid. <laughs> right. Speaking of the naming conundrum, I didn't have this on the docket, but I pulled it this morning. This is okay. from Zach Zuiden at Kotaku. Uh, Shakedown Hawaii is being released on the Wii and Wii U this summer. <laughs> Did you see this? There's a game coming out on the Wii? The, I'm going to read this article because it's funny. The original Nintendo Wii was launched all the way back in 2006, and now 14 years later, indie developer V Blank Entertainment is releasing Shakedown Hawaii on the old console and also bringing the game to Wii U, too. It's being released only in Europe, while the Wii U port is getting released more widely, which is weird because there's way less Wii U's out in the wild. Wii version's out July 9th, and the Wii U version comes out a little later in August. And in less exciting but still cool news, Shakedown is coming to Steam in August as well. So yeah, here's the box art for it. I uh, yeah, let's see that box art. Started out as an experiment to see if they could get the game running on Wii, and once that became possible, they started looking into if they could release a new Wii game in 2020. The answer was sort of. See, in the states, it appears, based on this blog post, that releasing a new physical Wii game isn't possible anymore, which makes sense why Just Dance isn't coming out on the Wii anymore because it still was for a while, up until like a year ago, I think. Yeah. They still had time to sneak out a copy of it on a physical disc. Over here in the US, the next best option was quickly porting the game to Wii U and releasing it on that platform. It seems that's still doable for now. That's so weird. Because they could. (laughs) Okay. There's only 3,000 copies of the Wii version. No word on how many copies to expect from the Wii U version. But I'm pretty sure there's only like 12,000 or 12 million at most Wii U's in the wild. Yeah, there's about a dozen people who actually bought the fucking console, so yeah. all 12 of them might buy it. I was like, I have, a, I have a Wii U, but I'm not gonna... I don't even know what this game is. It doesn't even talk about what the game is. I think maybe this is to try and get people to buy it on Steam. Like, you'll see the article for it, for a, like, it's coming to the Wii U, isn't that funny? And then you'll it'll make it stick out to you. Yeah. So when you see it listed on Steam, you'll check it out. This might be a spiritual sequel to Retro City Rampage, which if you remember that game. Yeah, okay. I played it a little. What's that? I played it a little. So yeah, it's, it's, it's made by the same people who made Retro City Rampage, and it is that yeah. style of game, like top-down, older-style GTA that is... The Retro City I, Rampage was apparently really good. I played it a little bit. I never finished it or anything. I couldn't get very far into it. I just don't like that top down. Like the only game that I got super far into with like a top down style kind of like that Mm -hmm. was uh, Hotline Miami. Oh yeah, I love Hotline Miami. This is definitely different than that. Yeah. So yeah, that's ridiculous. I mean, I guess I could get it on my Wii U, which is in a box in my closet. I was going to see how many many Wii U's have I sold. I know the Vita sold more than the Wii U. Wow. In their lifetime, I believe. It's just a picture of you. Yeah. <laughs> Who bought the Wii U? Brandon Duncan. <laughs> okay, I don't need to know how many Wii U games were sold. How many consoles? 13.5 million units. Yeah. Let's see. No, I'm just curious. So I'm going to look up the Vita. Viva and Mark. 
16 million Vitas. <laughs> okay. That's so it's hilarious. all more. Yeah. It's a bummer. The Vita's a good piece of hardware. Yeah. It didn't sell nearly as well as the PSP. So that's it deserves it. Yeah. What, do you, what have you been playing, Gary? I haven't talked to you much in the past few days. Yeah, I haven't talked to you much either. Um, I have not been playing much at all. I've had a busy life for the past few days. Yeah, well, yeah, um, your brother got married, right? Yeah. Which, if yeah, for cool. whatever reason you end up seeing this DJ, congratulations. Yeah. Happy marriage. Congratulations. <laughs> yeah. To you and your um, wife. What's his wife's uh, name? Uh, Sadie. Sadie, okay. Yeah, um, I've been playing a ton of D and D still. Oh yeah, I know you don't do your Sunday game anymore, right? Yeah, I did drop out of that one. Okay, we'll go because back. I, we'll get back this Thursday. I was gone this yeah. last week. Yeah, I was uh, playing with somebody, and I like we ended up having to bow out a session because uh, our DM was not feeling up to it. Okay, and. Uh, He's like, well, I mean, I have a session on Thursday. Do you guys want to start? And I'm like, oh, wait, shit. <laughs> but he, but uh, she actually gave me, like, a really good idea that I'm okay. that they're letting me steal, and it's going to make it a better session than it was going to be. Sweet. That's exciting. Yeah. Yeah, um, yeah it would, would have been cool. We ended up running a one-shot instead. Uh, I played as a horrible bastard fish man, and I loved it. I was uh, basically a, a rogue whose whole thing is like points and charisma, so I could pretend to be a priest and get people to like, oh, I need money to build a church. And they're like, oh, yeah, of course, of course. And the whole time, like, he's fucking going to me. This is all mine. <laughs> <laughs> That's cool. So were you like part fish? How does that work? Yeah, there's um, in D and D. There's a type of creature called the Triton. Uh, we were playing uh, okay. in the Theros campaign setting, mm -hmm. so which made what I was because in Theros in that campaign setting, they have like very present Greek esque gods who will straight up smite a motherfucker. Okay. <laughs> and I was pretending to be a priest in that setting, which <laughs> was spicy. I that loved sounds it. Sounds fun. Yeah. Yeah, it's just like, smite me, motherfucker. I'm 180. I have three <laughs> years left. What are you going to do? <laughs> That's awesome. It was a lot of fun. Unfortunately, I didn't get a ton of chances chances to be a bastard, but yeah. I do enjoy the opportunity to play that character. Uh, a lot of the time when I come up with an NPC I really like playing, I'll put it in our campaigns, but that's one I just can't do. <laughs> <laughs> It would just be simply unfair. Right, yeah. And it was it was yeah. good while it was, you know. Yeah. That's sweet. Yeah, I haven't been I've been playing The Last of Us. Can't talk about that because it's spoilery. And I'm yeah. still trying to avoid spoilers. I've been successful so far. Um, I listened then, to the uh besties cast on it. Oh yeah, I did where they, they don't spoil stuff, free. I assume, right? Yeah. Yeah. They're doing a spoiler to it, so like the first one is spoiler free, the next one will not be. Okay. So I'm gonna miss out on besties that week which is yeah. heartbreaking yeah i have to listen to that besties is so good it's really good <laughs> yeah i love it yeah that's good stuff it gives me some of the what i miss from having um the macaroys at polygon yeah like they talk video games because they don't do that anywhere else really. yeah i'm excited for cyberpunk to come out to get some monster factories though Oh, yeah, I was going to just say that. <laughs> I cannot wait to see what they can do with it. Right. I really hope if you go either end on those sliders, you get something fucked up, because I want to see their garbage baby. Yep, I know. I, that's what I thought of when I read whenever I read about that character creator. I'm like, yes, it's some good monster factories. <laughs> I wonder how they feel about it. Like, every time there's a game that's, like, touting a character creator, they're just like, oh, got to get it. Got to yep. do it. Like, we got to play. <laughs> yeah. All right, Gary. Well, thanks for co-hosting the show with me again today. No problem. It was time. very short notice this week, so. Yeah. I, yeah, it was fun. You want to pimp your stuff? Where can people find you? Um, you can find me, Gartandalus, pretty much everywhere except on Twitch. On Twitch, I am Tivril, T-Y-V-R-E-L. 
It's named after an old bard character I used to play. That's where we'll get that Last of Us 2 playthrough eventually, right? Uh, possibly. Who knows? I'd have to get, like, an El Gato. <laughs> you could just do it straight from your PlayStation. Do it that way. Uh, can you? Yeah, you can stream straight to Twitch from your PlayStation. If you want a camera, you got to get the PlayStation camera, but you can stream without a camera, too. And just have your mic on so people can hear you. But yeah, uh, I'm Brandon, Laird Brandon on Twitch. And if you search YouTube for Laird Brandon, I should be the first one that pops up. Don't have enough subs to get a custom link. And then LRD Brandon on Twitter and Instagram. But yeah, thanks everyone for chatting. We try to be here Sundays at 10 a.m., post on YouTube later that day. Sometimes the schedule fluctuates. I'll tweet about that if that happens. But thanks, everyone, for watching. Thanks again, Gary, for hanging out. No problems. See you.